us for that. Hey guys. Hello. Sum up the first half of the season. Uh, I think we we got to the halfway stage and we're reasonably happy with where we where we sit. Obviously, the back to back results over the Christmas period have have encouraged us. I think uh, there will always be games you look back on thinking you possibly should have got more out of. So points wise, you always think well, maybe you haven't quite got as many as your performances deserves. I think that's fair to say from our point of view. But uh, overall. Um, we're in a good good place. We've got more points than we we had at this time last year. Um, looking forward to the second half of the season. Uh, usually stronger in the second half, so no reason to think that won't happen again. So um, encouraged. What does that suggest you can achieve then, league-wise? Well, uh, we we're trying to. I've said many times we're trying to get to be a, a top ten side consistently. Um, we're able to manage it last year. Uh, we we don't want that to be seen as a just a one-off um, situation. We want that to be something that is expected and something that we we're always looking to to achieve as a bare minimum. So uh, it's not easy because almost every club around us has improved significantly in terms of the amount spent on their their squad in the summer. Um, no doubt people will be in the market again in January to to add players to the squads again. So it's. Uh, it's always difficult because everybody seems to be uh, investing uh, top, middle and bottom so um, for us to keep on progressing then uh, it's going to be a huge effort by everybody but we're encouraged as I said by, by the, the, the first half of the season The fact that you've been Manchester <coughs> City away beating Spurs away, beating Arsenal at home lost narrow games to United and Liverpool does that suggest that you more than competitive you can go beyond the, the top ten? Well that, that's... <laughs> We won't get ahead of ourselves. We we're doing okay, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, to go to the next level above that, then I, I think everybody agrees takes significant amounts of money, and uh, um, I don't think that's that's really an option. So um, we're encouraged by what we're doing, um, and we'll give it a, our best shot. I, I think we've proved this year and certainly last year against the top teams that we can we can go up against anybody and and give them a game. We've been able to overcome almost every. Every top team in, in the league since I've come here, we've beaten Man United, we've been Chelsea last year, we've uh, we've run United close at Old Trafford, we beat them here last year. Uh, Arsenal, we've beaten here, so that tells you we're, we're a good competitive side in the, in the hardest league in the Premier, in in world football rather. So, so we're a good team and we're a competitive team and a team that can cause problems to to any team. You said all the teams would be looking to strengthen you. Are you yourselves going to be able to do any kind of business? Um, we might look at the law market, we might look at things that um, give us an opportunity to, to have a look at players who, with a view, but um, we, we're not close to anything really at the moment. But uh, uh, we won't, I wouldn't have thought, be, be spending anything significant in, in the January window because uh, I think um, we're better served keeping what finances we, we have available, uh, keeping them ready to, to go into the market in the summer. I think that would be uh, our best policy. As you, been, as you mentioned, Lawrence, <coughs> you've been linked with Mohamed Salah at Chelsea, obviously that would mean, I suppose, making maybe an Asai deal permanent or, or cancelling a deal there with, with him or Moses, I suppose. Well, I don't think we can take two from the same team anyway, so we've already got Victor, so we, we have no intention of uh, changing that deal, so um, that's that's a no no go from our point of view. Uh, I take it though as well. There will be no outgoings given the likes of Begovic, Shawcross have been under certain teams. Well, there's the speculation about the best players at, at most clubs, and uh, obviously the two you mentioned are, are in that bracket from from our point of view. But uh, we we're not encouraging any bids on any of our players, and that that won't change in January. It won't change in the summer. Obviously, clubs might have something to other clubs might have something to say about that, and 
and be persistent, but uh, we don't encourage it. Uh, we've, we've had no bids for those two players uh, up to this point and don't anticipate we'll, we'll have bids in, in the January window either. Which got a year and a half left on his contract. Any kind of movement as regards it? A new deal for him? Uh, yeah, I think we're, there's discussions and conversations that has been had. Uh, I don't think it's uh, progressed um, further than that. It's just conversations between all parties, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. Any kind of time scale? No, not really. Um, obviously, the, the closer the, the contract comes to, to running down, then the more power in the negotiation shifts further away from us as a club and closer to, to the player and his, and his representatives. So um, I'm sure there's a, uh, there will be an opportunity to, to get something resolved. So how do you assess Manchester United this season? Do you see them as, as title contenders now? Well, I think so. Whether or not they've given themselves a little bit too much to do, I think they were at the 10 points in arrears at the moment. Um, and there's some very strong teams ahead of them. Um, they're getting into a run of form now, which will encourage them, and uh, that's what they need to do. They can't afford to have any more slip ups or, or lose too many games. Hopefully, we'll be able to overcome them. Uh, if we do that, that will be four defeats, I think. Um, I think historically, you can't afford any more than six, six to seven. Um, and if you have that many defeats in a season, it's almost impossible to, to win the Premier League. So, uh, they'll be aware of that, obviously. Given their history and the amount of times they won the Premier League, they know all about the stats and the likelihood of, of winning titles if if you've lost a certain amount of, of games. So um, it will become more difficult. But but they have the capacity and they have the players to to go on on extended runs as they're doing at the moment. But um, second half of the season, there'll be a lot of key moments in the season that they'll have to overcome and. And those key moments will have to go for them, and other teams will have to slip up for them to to win the title this year. I think. What well, then do you make of the job Ben Garfield? Well, it's still early days. He seems to talk a lot about his philosophy, and uh, any philosophy that you have as a manager takes time to to instill. So uh, he's trying to to work hard. He's certainly changed personnel. He's given guys that maybe were out in the cold another opportunity. He's changing shape and formations, and and that takes time. It takes time for them to take on board information and, and whether or not he's actually clear in his mind in exactly which way he wants to go long term, um, only time will tell, but uh, certainly he, he seems to be the the right figurehead for the club, uh, he's the guy that she sense they need given that it seems to be, or certainly last year was a time of transition for them and they're still going through that process to a certain extent. So. Uh, they need a strong person at the, the head of the club, and he, he certainly gives that impression to everybody. Uh, two point leagues, first of all, given the, the proximity of the games, are already squad wise, and you, you getting anyone back this weekend? No, no, I think in terms of injuries, so we, we've got one big doubt, and it's a disappointment to us, really, because uh, I think Boyan is probably uh, uh, unavailable for us. We, he's going for a scan uh, this afternoon, just to clarify exactly. What is going on? But uh, he's got an issue with his hamstring. Obviously, didn't complete the game uh, against West Brom, so he's a um, major doubt for the game. Uh, which, from our point of view, is a real, a real disappointment because he's been doing so well for us. But uh, we've got good players that are waiting to come in and have an impact, and uh, and, and we'll cope without him if that's what the situation is. And also, there seems to be a number of managerial changes, which is mm. make of the, the sudden changes. Well, it seems to be that once one decision is made, it sets off a chain of events, and uh, any number of uh, managers seem to come under pressure. And unfortunately, at this time of the year, and I know to my own cost in the past that uh, this is the time when clubs will make a decision to change managers. And uh, as always, it's you look at some of the situations and you feel have the have the manager, coaches really had enough time to. Give themselves an opportunity to, to turn things around, and and that's the one commodity as a Premier League manager that you you're not given. Yeah, you're given as much support as you can, and and people will try and support you in, in the best way they can as a club. But um, more often than not, it's time that they they can't give you. Okay, I know you were very impressed the weekend by Man Hughes' uh, performance. <coughs> How much a, a blow is going to be when he goes to the African Cup of Nations? Yeah, it's it's a disappointment, but uh, we're fully aware he's, he's 
Senegalese international. We knew that when we brought him to the club, so we, we can't uh, be disappointed or upset about the situation because we're fully aware of it anyway. So um, from our point of view, it's, it's disappointing because we feel that given his performance in the last few games, we feel that Mam is, is coming to a little bit of form now and goals help strikers always. So having scored two, you, you would like to think he, this is the time that you go on a run of scoring on a regular basis, but that's opportunity for us is going to be taken away from us because he's uh, going to be away. But um, we'll see how we go. We've, we're going to make representations, hopefully, to, to try and get a little bit more time with him uh, before he actually does leave for the competition and uh, hopefully that will be uh, uh, something that will be a positive for us but um, obviously the FIFA regulations state that they need to go or allow to call players up to two weeks before the actual tournament starts so uh, that's that's what we'll ask to, to try and possibly have a conversation about but um, at the moment we're likely to lose him on, on around about the 5th of January um, so that's a disappointment for us. They've got a very hard group at home to Senegal, so they might, he yeah. might be back quicker than you imagine. Yeah, possibly. Um, don't want to be disrespectful from our purely selfish point of view. We want him to go out and, and be back with us as quickly as possible. But in fairness, they are in a difficult group, but they are one of the stronger teams in the competition, so you fully expect them to to be in the latter stages. It might not happen if it, if it doesn't and he's back early, then we're... We're upset for Senegal, but delighted for ourselves. But uh, we'll have to win, see. I know it helps when you're winning over Christmas, but it does take a lot out of the players. I mean, are you one of those that favour a, a sort of winter break, or do you think it should be done as it was done in your day? As a player? Um, difficult to say. I think you, you're always looking for the, the way it is at the moment as a club and, and as a squad. You, you're always looking for opportunities. Certainly in the new, initially in the new year, if there's uh, free weekends. Or just whether or not you you're playing on a on a Saturday, then don't have a game till Monday. There's opportunities where you can take the players away and, and have breaks, and I think everybody agrees it's beneficial uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Even three four days uh, has a marked impact. Uh, almost every club I've been at have tried to take the players away um, during that that period, and almost every time I've done it there's, there's been a positive reaction when, when you bring them back so even a matter of days can make a difference um, whether or not it needs to be in the calendar you know, I'm not sure it's, it's very difficult because the calendar is, is so tight and there's so many competitions and international get-togethers kick in, in in the early new year as well so um, the opportunity to do it even if there was a, a real enthusiasm for it uh, might not it might not work um, but I would think if you did a straw poll of most managers and possibly players, um, if you said, well, you'd have to work an extra week towards the end of the season, give up an extra week of your summer holiday, I think most people would go for it. Good. Thank you. Mark, it's been a, a good Christmas and uh, better than last year. I mean, this year you're several points um, more than you had this time last season. And you must be looking at the table and thinking, Swansea, Newcastle, West Ham, we can catch these, these teams. So this is the only way up. Well, that's where we're looking. Obviously, we're just out of the top ten, but um, certainly well within uh, shouting bit distance of the the teams that you've you've mentioned. Um, uh, we've just come through a really strong and difficult period for us in terms of the opposition that we're up against. So we, we, arguably, we're still right in the middle of it because we've still got obviously United to come and and, and Arsenal following quickly on on the, their heels, and that's having faced them both in recent weeks and gone to Old Trafford and, and gone to uh, Anfield and, and faced Chelsea as well in, in this period. So we're really pleased with where we sit given the fact that uh, the computer fixtures or what the computer threw up uh, at us during this period uh, was a little bit unkind but we've been able to come through the, the most part of it and uh, we're still in good shape so we're re really encouraged by that. This could be uh, Stoke's best result of Christmas New Year for 30 years if you beat Manchester United. Don't want to put any pressure on you or anything like this, but uh, yeah. uh, it'll be just as hard, if not harder, to beat Manchester United this year than. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, last year. yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this year, I think in the calendar year 2014, has been been great. I think we've um, picked up more points in, in the calendar year than than 
any other stuff previously in the Premier League, so that's something we're encouraged by. But uh, United are a good team and playing well at the moment. Maybe uh, this time last year, or when we played them last year, they, they weren't in a situation where maybe their confidence was as high as possibly is at the moment. But uh, it's up to us to, to ask questions of them, um, and we always do that um, against the top teams. Our record against the top teams since I've come here is good. So uh, they know they they're in for a for a difficult game, and they'll have to play well to 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 stop us getting a positive result. Chelsea came here, showed its respect of of playing a more defensive game, uh, got people behind the ball, had the benefit of an early goal, which hopefully we can avoid against United. And in the end, we 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 matched them for the most part, and and I know that they were really delighted to go away from here with a positive result, Chelsea. So. Um, it is a difficult place to come to, to get a positive result if you're a top team, so we, we need that to, to continue. It is a difficult place. Do you think you've turned the corner with the uh, win at West Brom? Mm -hmm. It's a can now be a fortress again for 2015. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not sure how many games we've actually played. We've played more away games than home games, so I think we've probably lost three. Um, won four, you probably know the stats better than me, drawn one. so. We have played more games away from here, so um, our points for and uh, since uh, we've been on the road and uh, in comparison to our home form, I'm not sure if they're on level par now or whatever, but uh, um, I think when you look back on the season initially, yeah, our home form was a little bit um, uh, inconsistent, but I, I think we've got back on track very much so now. And uh, along with that, our away form is is a lot better than it was this time last year, and and it's continued from the back end of last season. So we're we're really delighted with that because that was something that held us back last year. So as long as our home form continues, which we see no reason for it not to, then uh, we feel we're going to have a good season. And Max, how pleased are you to have Glenn Whelan back in full fit? Glenn's doing really well. We we obviously disappointed when he went out of the team. We uh, through no fault of his own, obviously broke his leg and had a crack in the. In the bone that I had to uh, heal, and he had to bide his time because uh, players came in in his absence and, and did well for me. So I try and be be fair. If players play well, then then they deserve to keep their position. So it wasn't a reflection on Glenn or, or what he was doing in training or whatever. He just couldn't get back in because players had done well while he was out and while he was absent. But he's come in and uh, played really well. Um, we've got two clean sheets since he's come back and. I'm sure he'll claim some benefit for that, and, and I'd agree with him. Um, so he's he's doing really well, but I think it shows the strength of the group that we've got a lot of players that are really are aching to get back into the team, and, and as a consequence, they're working really hard in in training to make sure that if they do get an opportunity, and when they when it does arrive, then they're in the best physical condition to be able to make the most of it, and that's what Glenn's done. And his contract expires at the end of the summer. Have you opened talks with him over any of you? I think there was talks earlier on. Um, we're constantly talking to, to agents and representatives of players. We we're well aware of contract situations of all our players, and, and those conversations are ongoing. Would you, would you be keen to extend his deal and have him? Yeah, Glenn's have done really well for me, and uh, he's already, I think, been offered an improved deal. Um, that wasn't that wasn't concluded, so I think there's still negotiations to, to be done. Okay, thank you very Thanks, much. Guys. Cheers.